Welcome, everybody. <laughs> okay, welcome to the Monday meeting, April 17, for the development team of Open Source Ecology. And we have an agenda. That agenda you can look at on the D3D log page, D3D log wiki page. And you, let's start with that agenda. D3D development team agenda right here. So I'm going to share my screen. Sorry, here. Let me share my screen. Okay. Let's look at the meeting agenda. Things are going well. Um, welcome to new developers. We got Frank McCormick actually joined us this week. Uh, so we're at a total of about uh, eight or nine active people on the technical side. And as far as the numbers go, <clears throat> let me share that. This is the current number. Uh, so what we're seeing here is that only five people have logged. So once again, for this meeting, what I will do is anyone who joins this, or if you haven't filled out the timesheet, please do so and we can revisit this at the end of the meeting. But only five people have logged. We still have logged already. 102 hours for this week so you can say it's uh, if it's if it's a 40 hour week that's 2.5 people full-time equivalent that's happening on direct development outside of anything else that goes on in the project uh, outside of the the main core working team and there's some other other activity besides that um, so back to the agenda uh, those are the numbers uh, the thing to to only thing I want to mention here is that yeah please please keep logging this if we track these numbers then we have a good historical record and the idea is um, just for perspective Linux currently has 5,000 people that are active contributors it's like a billion dollar project but our goal is humbly to rise we're at about you know from about 10 here to a hundred by the end of the year so so really significant boost of velocity and product and continue growing from there so ambitions are high i think we can be at a linux level if i mean we have to really streamline and, and get our stuff to be effective but um my personal goal would be to yeah so abe for example has added his time my personal goal is that within three years we're we're at the level of linux development in terms of the number the volume of people we're talking about thousands of dedicated people along the lines of the 10 hours per week and by that time of course some people will be doing this as a full-time gig because um, they're able to get off uh, get started on some of the open source micro factory aspects or running workshops or taking this as a full-time full-time engagement contributing effort back to the to the project so visions are high it takes a lot of effort to get there. The main thing that we're working on is, is we, we're developing a recruiting team, an HR human resources team, and uh, we're just trying, at, at present, we're pretty much streamlining the operations there in terms of effectively getting a funnel to interview and get people on board. So we're, we're just pretty much starting that, um, going through some working out of the, the procedures and, and workflow on that. But... Um, if we look at um, the numbers here, yeah, I mean, not not bad as far as there's at least a a clear visible where where did that go? Okay, the graph disappeared, but there is definitely a clear and visible upward trend in our numbers. So let's continue that. Okay, next item on agenda. So please look at the agenda. I'll send. I'll put in a direct link into the presentation you can look on the d3d log page for that as well uh, second item let's talk about the product release schedule perspective and review of last week so we're working diligently on a d3d 3d printer we're making the instructionals happen and for perspective where are we going with this so here's uh here's the the idea for the very near term we're on D3D right now, uh, so that is April 29. That's the when the build is going to happen. The month after that, for that's um, April is pretty much the beginning of June. Um, 
April. April is the beginning of April 29 is the beginning of May. So a month from then in June, we're talking about the tall version of D3D. So here we go with a tall version of D3D. Um, that's a relatively easy improvement over what we have right now because the easiest way to implement that would be to take two of our 16 inch 3D printers, connect them through angle iron. So one is sitting very much on top of the other connected through like a six foot piece of angle iron on the four corners. So you basically have a tall vertical stack of two 16 inch versions that are connected. And the connection can actually be magnetic using the magnets that we've seen. Several of those make a very, very tight connection. So if you take a piece of say eighth inch by two inch angle and connect the four corners vertically using angle, you can stack two of those 3D printers and then you just need to extend the Z axis while the X and Y remain identical. And at that point we do also want to have the universal controller so that we can handle the larger current or larger size of the machine for the z-axis we're going to need more power on the z-axis at that point uh, so talking about printing things like six foot, six foot fence posts or plumbing pipes that gets us into print clusters and filament extruders so on a print cluster as soon as we get the 3d printer developed we want to scale that so we know how to run an effective print cluster operation so that means using a single computer through Ethernet or through USB, connecting to control multiple 3D printers. And that's talking about actually starting to make useful parts. Like for one, printing parts for the workshops. Like right now, I'm printing parts for the workshop. But it would be good to have that such that you don't take two weeks to print them, but maybe like a day or two in your print cluster. Um, as opposed to having like one one single 3D printer. So we can scale that. Now, uh, I also made contact with BCN 3D, Movio, the robotic arm. So if you talk about a print cluster, if you want that to be automated, you want to have automated part harvesting. One way to do that is through a small open source robotic arm, very low cost 3D printed. You can look, click on that video. Uh, if you, you have to go into actually view mode, has to be presentation mode in order for you to view that video, but that's actually a linked video. So that would be a perfect idea. Now these guys are for real. They use the MIT license. That means the design is fully open source. Currently they have it in, in SolidWorks, but I just emailed them to cough up some, some step files so we can start working with it in FreeCAD. And I, I asked them for some assistance on helping us do that. But that would be a perfect idea where if we have the workshop, we're, print, we're doing 3D printer builds, and then a great offering is a robotic arm. It's like either a toy or a functional thing, but that's a very high, highly exciting and potentially practical device. So we can definitely work on upgrading the Movio for automatic, automatic part harvesting from our 3D print cluster. Basically you have a little arm by the print bed and the arm picks off the finished parts from the print bed. Now that would have mean that you're printing things a lot vertically because on the PEI build surface parts come off very much readily once the platform cools so you can remove parts very easily with very little force and I think the Movio I think that does like half a kilogram or something of, of force so I think that would be uh, pretty much more than enough than more than we need for pulling parts off the print bed. So the next part would be in a roadmap uh, the filament extruder. Uh, and why I say the th print cluster, filament extruder, and six in foot tall 3D, th all of those are ready improvements of one technology building upon another, building upon open source. So the filament extruder is likewise completely open source. It produces 12 pounds of filament per hour, sorry, not hour, per day. So think about making six spools of 3D printing filament overnight in one day. Fully open source design. We're in contact with the developer of that. Um, good idea. ABS pellets, if you buy them off the shelf, they'll cost you about $2 a pound. So 
instead of spending about 10 bucks for a spool of filament you can be producing for two dollars if you buy the pellets off shelf or if you grind your own then you can get them for free you can take car bumpers off junkyards and grind them down and make printing filament or something like that so that's the general uh, rollout schedule and talking about a little bit so that we can go with June 3rd the 8 foot tall D3D absolutely we want to offer that as a workshop offering for uh, a bit much bigger upgrade and then filament maker possibly we need some more people on the team we don't have enough people to complete the documentation because the focus right now until the 29th is documentation uh, the, the animated instructionals which I think are coming out great uh, from some of the the stuff that people have posted okay and then the plan continuing is July so that's a few months from now two and a half months from now CNC torch table which is a, a bigger version of the D3D platform with scaled up parts that's gonna be five feet by ten feet in size and will carry an oxyacetylene torch and then we get speculative for what happens after that but we're gonna continue scaling up in August on a heavy-duty CNC machine version of the D3D platform, meaning two-inch big rods, heavy-duty machining. I've already done here things like the heavy-duty drill press and a lathe, so so basically putting heavy uh, heavy motors or hydraulic motors on on a solid CNC axis. Now this time around we're going to make it CNC before it was just manual machines when I built the heavy-duty drill press that was back like 2010 or so um, we can now automate them for heavy-duty CNC machines September we're gonna release the brick press and then December is gonna be the seed home so, so it gets more sketchy as far as the exact schedule since you know after July but definitely until July full force on machine development um, for up to the heavy duty machining so we can build tractors cut out steel for the, the tractors and brick presses and everything else as far as the enterprises here so we, what we could see is uh, 3d printing the the build workshops enterprise print cluster could be a production model where you actually sell parts so that's the idea and I'll quit at that for for the roadmap so next would be review of last week so we were doing as I mentioned the animated explosions within CAD and, and here I want to add so I want to get this general schedule for the meetings and let's do a little celebration if anyone wants to pipe in good things that have happened so far for morale team morale if anyone wants to pipe in you can unmute yourself but I would say that that I was completely depressed <laughs> no I'm just kidding here but I saw some of the animations come in and it just makes me happy to see that our team is is working well I mean Explode part animations, that's like a pretty high high tech thingy. If you if you know if you ask somebody how to do that, uh you know you guys actually are starting to know how to do that. You have demonstrated that we can produce them. Uh so that's a I would call that uh a morale booster right there. And uh anyone else have any other comments of good things that have happened? I think ni another nice thing is uh on the the three D printer group. I'm seeing discussions starting to happen there like we're taking all the discussions uh, basically posting our work product and links and then commenting on the thread within a 3d printer group so uh, we've got 14 members there right now but a 3d printer development group like posting the updates and like the videos and <clears throat> all the product that's happening so far that's happening on uh, 3d printer development any other quick comments someone wants to interrupt or put it in, maybe in the chat box I can read it off if you don't want to unmute yourself so I'll just continue going right here uh, but please uh, type in a good comment and increase your morale and the world's morale because at least a hundred people will watch this within a week and then thousands over time okay uh, okay let's go to the progress updates. so the format for progress updates is, is scrum which is a stand-up it's scrum methodology you can read that online but in Scrum, they have one minute like stand up meetings where people report on our progress really quickly. And for that, we actually are putting our pages within this document to show what people have done. So I'm going to uh, cover a couple of these slides here. Do we have a manual? No, we don't here. So I'm going to cover his slide here. So Emmanuel did start it on a cable chain. Excellent. Well, the cable chain is a pretty complex thing, and we want to be able to represented accurately within CAD including how it's mounted exactly 
to the frame and to uh, to the axis and and to everything else. So this is nice. I'm loving it. Then then because it's constrained properly, we can do this. But um, I'd like to shame Emmanuel publicly for not putting a link to the to his to this on a log because I haven't seen it when I looked at this. Thank you, Emmanuel. Good job. <laughs> okay. Next, Jose. I don't believe he he could make it. He's got an anniversary today. Um, but for Jose, we've got uh, he's been working on an extruder holder for the mini and for the 12-inch version. So this is how it's looking. That's pretty good. Uh, integration of the assembly. He's working on assembly integration, organizing that within FreeCAD. So that's pretty good. Uh, great stuff. Uh, so definitely progress, visible progress there. Uh, I've yet to print out this uh, extruder mount right here, but it looks good to me, and that's that's pretty nice. So we have now an extruder mount that mounts under the carriage or over the carriage. Like here, it mounts over, and this is a horizontal carriage. It's not staying up like vertically. Um, in the small small 3D printers, we're laying them on top of the X, we're laying the Y flat on top of the Y axis. Okay, next, Roberto, very nice. So so I'd like to point out that yeah, he sent the first animation with full voiceover. Uh, actually, I think Jean Baptiste did the first one. His voice was was really hard to hear, but here we've got a pretty nice example of what the the finished product looks like. In fact, I'm going to show that to everybody, present it, and press play for what a finished instructional with very nice, nicely timed voiceover looks like. So, so get a look at that. Um, sorry, it's cut off a little bit in the video, uh, but if you're sh looking at my screen, you should be able to see this. So look at that, our title page, face, so look at that perfectly timed all the parts are accurate quick and effective commentary the voiceover here I must point out is very nice uh, very quick to the point clearly audible uh, the bolts screw in um, like no no dead time it's, it's this is exactly what we want no dead time because think about this in the future thousands of people are gonna see this and one second of dead time for a thousand people is what an hour one second is one minute is 60 seconds um, one hour is 3600 seconds so it's like Every second translates to so much more time when so many people <laughs> view it. Okay, very good. So continuing, uh, so we, so that I think that's a good paradigm for for how the other ones should look. Simple clips, and then we, when we build this, this is perfect. I mean, when I'm in a workshop, I can use this exactly as is. We can loop this, and everyone builds this part. It's going to take like maybe you know five minutes or so to build this part. It's a relatively simple part, but bam that and actually we have four axes so we do these four times so this video playing in 30 seconds will last us probably like 15 minutes or so just as I was expecting pretty much uh, a much longer time of the actual build as people watch keep watching this they get the hang of it and build four of these items because four are needed for the entire printer okay very good okay lash low uh, first part on D3D Y axis assembly YouTube. I want to see the YouTube. So this is good. I haven't seen this yet. Um, so you can embed the video by going into insert video, but I'm going to look at that. So you can actually feel free, Lashlow, to put that as, as we're watching this, since you've seen your own video. Um, Begin with the carriage assembly. Stick to oh, the nice. 15 and half inch rods inside the carriage assembly into the iron bearings. Spin the rods into place very gently, but you will knock out the bearings. With uh -huh. rods in place, place the assembly in front of you horizontally so that the ripped hole of the carriage is away from you and the smooth hole is closer to you. Take the eye lap piece with the belt opening facing left and insert the right end of the rods all the way through the eye lap piece. Tighten the bolts on the rods. Okay, okay, so definitely um, the script over there is complete. However, it's not timed accurately with the. Um, the words, so there's a little bit of work that 
needs to happen. But but very good. This this is nice. I like it. We can definitely, um, you know, this this shows you. Okay, this is how it looks. You can take a look at that and make sense out of it. But we need to do a little more work on that. So probably continuation there. Very good. Um, okay, questions and suggestions. Okay, so so this is four reports, and I guess whoever did not report, um, let's see. We're missing a couple of people, so for next time, please, please do this. We're doing this for the first time, so basically everybody is is putting in their work product into the presentation, so we're effectively showcasing all that's done. So for the couple of people that are left here, like uh, Jean Baptiste and uh, Abe, and and Chaz, uh, do you want to pipe in as far as what your progress is? Sure. Um I've got the pieces sandwiched together, and I got like some of the screws set in. Um, I was a bit unsure as far as the orientation, as okay. to where, um, where to place some of the screws, and if I was using the correct um, screws. Um, if I go back to the script, let me look back at it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You think you can figure it out as far as what the next steps are based on watching some of these other videos? Um, I'd probably like to... Uh, Ask a few questions. Okay. I think I mostly have it, but um, let me look at back at the script. Okay. So actually, why don't we do this? Since we have an agenda item within, like a little bit later, we've got the questions page, and then a suggestions page at the end of the meeting. Maybe we can go there for questions related both to the process and to the actual work product. So. Uh, let's let's do that. If you wouldn't mind throughout the rest of this meeting, as you continue listening, can you type in your questions on the um, questions page? So just start a new page in his doc and try to do that. So there's there's a questions page, actually a question suggestions page right here already. So we can you can uh, type that in there. So let's actually move on. Jean Baptiste, can you um, update us real quick? Yep, hear you now. Right, so I, I still need to re-record the, the script, mm -hmm. and then um, tweak the video so it's timed according to the timing for the script. So I'm going to be working on that today. Excellent. Okay, please put your uh, thing into the... Because this document is open to the public, people who can follow our meetings, they can see actually everything that is done. That will help anyone who's joining the team or otherwise is interested in following what we're doing. So we're leaving a very nice paper trail, which is pretty comprehensive, and people can get oriented. So I'd like you to do that, please. Thank you, Jean-Baptiste. Abe, do you have anything to, to report? Abe, go ahead. We're not hearing you if you're speaking. Can you hear me? Yes, now we can. Okay. Um, yeah, I had a couple questions. I think I, I started to ask about the uh, the timesheet. I wasn't sure if it ah. is it possible to enter uh, the time into that daily, or okay. that might be easier. Just, I assumed it was once a week, or yeah. I'm not sure how that script works. Right, right. Um, it's just a form that's once a week at the end of the week, right before this meeting. Okay because we're reviewing the numbers, like we're looking at these numbers right here in this graph, uh, which I'm going to update at the end of the meeting. If you type in, if you use the form, which is the, it's called volunteer timesheet or just timesheet, you can input just your name, hours, and what you did in those hours. So, yes, very quick and effective. Other than that, that a while ago. okay, um, oh yeah. Let's see, I heard yep. another question down there. Um, so, you know, if I understand, we're working uh, pretty exclusively right now on the D D D D three D mini as the first priority because I noticed um, it didn't specify in my portion of the script. I see. But it, I noticed that Roberto was doing the uh, short idler, so I yeah. assume that right now we're we're prioritizing the the mini. Is that yeah. Correct? Well, actually, because a lot of the procedure is quite similar. It's not we're necessarily prioritizing the mini because the pretty much the same procedure applies. So let's actually go back to the to the last week's assignments 
at the log and, sh and I can tell you which one is universal versus for one machine only. So, but essentially the individual parts, like the carriage side, like the idler side, like the motor side, they're all identical for the three machines. But what's going to differ is the length of the actual axes, meaning the length of the rod that goes in there. So the rod length and a, and a belt length. That's the only difference between the three different versions. Um, so that's, and the short idler side will be used um, for all of them. So let's see if this thing log. Yeah, short short works for all of them, so so we don't need the longer one for the the long idler side for the other ones. So we're okay on that. And if we go, so let me just pull up the last week's uh, division of labor there. Let's see. Explore part animations index. Okay, it's a small small graphic here, but if I'm gonna go in there, but yeah. Oh. I'll just pull it up. So I'll talk more about that in a little while. Let's let's stick to the agenda for now. And please, uh, if your question has not been answered, just uh, put it into the questions page. Um, so I think that's. But but uh, Abe, anything to add on the actual the actual um, work itself? Yeah, I'm, I'm getting uh, pretty far. I think on the on the assembly and animation mm -hmm. uh, just not used to some of the sub functions in FreeCAD yet so I've had some issues I guess getting the clam shell parts together getting okay. unions I was trying to import uh, mm -hmm. what Roberto did with the, uh, the short idler and I thought well that would be faster but then manipulating those parts and managing them uh, trying to get it to a single unit was a little difficult so I, I'm, I'm just kind of doing it manually uh, putting it together with constraints and stuff, and, and but I did get the uh, like step. I'm down, I'm down to step three, although I haven't edited. I've got lots of video, and I did all my audio recorded. Okay. But uh, so definite, I've, I've definite got, progress. Like, to do. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. So what I would like to suggest for everybody is we have the development uh, working group page on network.opensourceecology.org. 3D printer development. I mean, feel free to use that. Just spam that with all the ongoing stuff. Like, like if you have a question, don't be shy about posting. It's it's our development log. Treat it as a log where we just uh, do um, basically a constant flow of activity there. The idea is that as soon as you post something, someone can actually help you, as opposed to you just holding it to yourself and you can't get help. I mean, it's so just to just publish early enough now we really encourage you to do that like especially for technical issues like okay I have a problem with this just ask it right there and get an answer so I, I really encourage everybody to do that I know uh, there's a few people that are doing it we've got a manual that's doing it which let's see that's um is that is that Abe or who is Wits? yes that's me. okay okay so that's good uh, so yeah good good question there uh, we've got Roberto posting. I think Ch Jean Baptiste has done that. Chaz has done it. Um, I know Jose has done it. So, but otherwise, everybody else, please, please, if you have not posted yet to the development group, do so. Okay. Last last person is um, Emmanuel. Can you talk and bring us in? Because I, I filled in your slide regarding the cable chain. But anything else to add? So we're finalizing essentially the complete, complete assembly of all the 3D printers. So after the cable chain, we actually still have the spool holder. Uh, that's not been added to the uh, actual CAD. And the most simple way to implement the spool holder would be the short idler piece attached to the frame to one of these metal pieces that sticks up and then bends over with another idler piece. So, so basically more of the rods sticking up and over to hold a spool. I think that's a very easy way to do it without adding any part count at all, not even a 3D printed piece, because we're using the idler side and the rods to make an assembly that's basically like a fork, like a, like an L going up and then to the over the printer. So anything else to add, Emmanuel, or you're indisposed? Hey, yeah, just doing. Yeah. Um, you say about the source file, it's just uh, just the progress. It's not ready yet. 
Um, so I was, the, the chain is not, uh, okay. it will not be adjustable. Okay. Because eventually I'm, I'm making a curve and uh, so I'm, the, I'm making a path, a, a path array so the okay. object follows the curve. Okay. Uh, I just want, because it, it is not easy. Uh, yeah. It takes time for adjustments. I, I would like to know where exactly the chain will be. So okay. I right, right. Have to, so you see that the one part is uh, on the extruded holder. I think that's correct, right? One part of the chain. Yeah, uh, look at the detail on that page. It actually shows it. Um, I don't think it's actually... Yeah, yeah, that... No, there's, there's details there. We can look at the... So there's a page on the wiki called D3D Cable Chain. And I'll just go through that just for everybody's reference and for everybody's watching it. But there's a fine detail as far as how it goes. So, so in this picture is the most accurate representation that's on a 16-inch version. But the idea is on the carriage itself, it's mounted to the top. And it's actually, I put a magnet on the bottom right here and a magnet on the, no, actually no magnet even on top of the, uh, this idler because it happens that the magnet on the, the cable chain sticks to the rod that's inside the 3D printed piece. So there's just a magnet under here. And then on the far side, it actually clamps to the rod using the terminal okay. piece. Now for the, the second cable chain, it's actually bolted because there's a it's over a bolt hole and the beginning piece has a hole in it for a bolt so using one of our existing bolts which is the longer of the two m6 screws we're adding no part count but attaching the the second one with a bolt and the third one is attached just to the side of the controller just with a magnet two magnets there so that's how it's done here now for the d3d mini uh, because of the slightly different geometry it'll have to be modified a little bit the best idea would be if we could make a like a cable chain construction set, and I don't know how easy that could be done, but eventually we'll do it where you can probably write a script where you can say, oh, like make it bend like this, and possibly do a little uh, little interface for producing the cable chain in a rapid way. Because right now you're just uh, angling the pieces manually by hand. Is that the idea? Uh, uh, for for the CAD file. Yeah. What I do is I add the, the, the first and the last uh, links because they are different. Yep. I I add them. I cannot constrain them because they are uh, files from STL. Okay. So the, uh, the faces are not parallel. Oh, not okay. Right angle, so I cannot constrain it. Uh, but I add these first and last links and then I make a curve. Okay. And so path array of, uh, of the, of the, okay you know, the it sounds okay well, let me let me just interrupt but it sounds like okay if those are in SDL format I think we got to go back and I think we got to redraw them then because without the perfect constrainability this is going to be a nightmare to put that all together if you cannot constrain them together very easily what I'm imagining is that if you if you are able to constrain them then within current FreeCAD functionality, I, I think you can even literally pull, or at least it can happen that you pull on one end and the actual cable chain straightens out and follows you how you're pulling it. If that capacity is not within the, the, the assembly workbench, it can be added. So we should be thinking uh -huh. about uh, it might so it might be, be beyond the scope of, an, of of what we can do right now, but definitely eventually what we want to do is make it such that you make the when you actually pull on the cable chain it reconforms to how you're moving like the first the the beginning and end pieces. If you actually pull on the end piece, the chain should follow you like a snake. So that would be the eventual goal. But for that, I think we got to start with the the not SDLs. I don't think I mean. It, think you're going to kill yourself with the SDLs there. I do not know how this can happen. It's okay. uh, way beyond my calibration. Can you do a... 
at present, can you constrain the holes to, to one another? Or you can't? The links? Yeah. Um, uh, I don't think so. Even if we yeah. have solids, I don't think it will, it will be... No, but the whole, the whole alignment, the whole... A hole in hole because one side has a peg and the other one has a hole so you can definitely constrain them by doing the circle constraint so uh, you can definitely do that yeah. within constraints um, yeah I don't know for yeah, now no, I, I would... do the easy, easy okay. way yeah. Path. yeah yeah I mean your picture looks good but if uh, and maybe we just leave it at that for the D3D Mini, but, but I mean, we're going to have to re rework that because, for example, like, even if you have to change, switch the angle of each part, isn't it that when you constrain two parts and you switch the angle between one and the other, all the other ones move, so you don't have to rearrange all the other ones that are attached. They, they both move together. So, um, I mean, I think there's a... We'll figure it out, but do what you're doing I, I, I right don't now. think it will work that way yeah I don't know. we can make I, it work but know. maybe not now okay okay so definitely um challenges there yeah it's not the easy part it's got too many moving pieces but we'll get it we'll get it later um, so uh, on the mini on the mini the, the link that attached to the extruder uh, holder is uh, the, i use the yeah. bolt made. so it goes through the bolt that grabs yeah. the mag Oh yeah. Uh, the oh, other, that'd be good. The other end, uh, I think I would put it on the green carriage side. I don't know. And use again. Um, yeah. The bolt. Piece. Yeah, yeah. So it the only thing that takes time is to make the curves. Uh, yeah. Not the only pain, uh, because even when I do the path array, the the links are not exactly on the curve. They are slightly outside. So it's, you know, uh, yeah. there is a little look, play there. Anyway, yeah, yeah we do it. Uh, yeah, just yeah. Month, and just, um, just to finalize the D3D Mini, so at present we have achieved a 5x5x5 five by five by five inch print area, correct? Uh, uh, I think so. From the CAD file it shows that we have 5x5x4.9 five by five by something. That's very good. Um, so we can. You have to put it together to make sure, because I don't know how the end links, if the, no, no, sorry, if the end stops are where they supposed to go. Yeah. Or if we have to check. Yeah. Uh, so just I don't to know how this works. Yeah. That's right. So just to show you guys, I mean, that's what one of the the axes from the mini looks like, and we're just making a bunch of these. Um, so the tiny frame is behind me. That's that's a little baby frame right there. It's a tiny thing. It's eight inch, but this is the general idea. You've got the the motor. Look at that. You've got your end stop with quick attach by magnets. Very nicely held. See, it snaps right in. The carriage moves back and forth, and that's the small idler. Uh, so that's really good. Uh, and a belt tensioning mechanism. This is, that's probably the trickiest thing, but it's basically uh, you thread it through and it's got one peg on each side. You wind it. Let me actually show you how to do that because that and actually maybe somebody can take this on and I don't know how we're going to do that in CAD because the belt working with the belt is going to be tricky. But what happens is you take out this one plug so that plug just comes right out. That's the plug that went inside that hole. So that plug came out of that hole. Now the belt is loose. The belt is wound through the other side, through the peg on the other side, because the peg has got an interior hole. So it's actually, oh man, you guys, let me just, yeah, let me record the video here. So the other side has got the peg there. The belt goes through the middle of that peg. But now, because I took out the plug on the other side, that plug, the belt is loose now, so I can move it. So see, now it, it flop, it's floppy. Um, and then, so the first step is, it's, so actually now you can pull out this, this plug, 
So I'm going to pull out this plug. And now the belt is loose, you see. So this is the this is the trick right here. This is the most advanced belt tightening mechanism in the world. <laughs> uh, we came up with it with Michel Dory. But um, the belt actually goes through the plug. The step number one is to put this plug in. And then uh, you tighten, you pull, you pull on that to tighten it. See when you pull on it, oops, no, sorry, sorry. See, this is this is where it gets tricky. Before you insert this plug, yeah, this is, I mean, this is quite, this requires a good instruction. Um, before you insert that plug into this hole, you need to take this piece of belt and put it under the plug and the belt has cogs and the plug hole has cog notch like uh, the ribs so when you put that plug in you have now fixed the one side of the belt this belt here is not coming out now to tighten everything you pull on this so you pull on the part that's inside the plug so you're pulling on the plug that's inside the the plug and now see I tighten the belt by pulling on this and once you get it tight you put the plug on the other side so I'm gonna tighten it right now as we speak and I'm gonna play guitar because this thing gets tight like a guitar string so I'm putting the plug in on the other side while tensioning from the other side. Okay. And can't play guitar? Well, you can't really hear it, but it, it's re reasonably tight. And uh, that's it. But that's that's going to be the most complicated instructional in the whole entire system. Uh, how to t tension the belt and maybe I'll do that or maybe somebody else can do that but you've seen it here so anyone who who can do it uh, that would be a great assignment for somebody who's uh, I think it's a little tricky because how are you gonna do that in CAD when the belt is kind of flexible and, and I don't know how you're gonna do that uh, that would require some pretty advanced CAD to kind of make it really realistic um, so we'll work on it okay but back to the the agenda. We're at 11.47. I'm trying to stick to the agenda. So we're effective here. Um, okay. Uh, we're supposed to, we're kind of over time here, but review of protocols and standard for effective development. Uh, one thing I'm going to mention, whenever you do embeds, like for example, your pictures. So, so let's talk a little bit about how we make this development more effective. Whenever you paste in pictures, what I always do is I use, uh, let me share my screen. Whenever I paste in images, like for example, whatever I do, typically you want to go into a, I do screenshot and GIMP. In GIMP, I reduce the image size. So for example, from like, if you take a screenshot, it might be like 500K. Well, I reduce it to like 50K in GIMP because if you have like a 20 page document with like half a meg pictures on each page, it's going to take a bunch of time to load up. So I always try to reduce it. That's um, that's one point I want to bring up about lightweight file size when you're embedding pictures. Uh, pay attention to that. Um, the other thing for effective development, I'm going to say keep posting on the on the D3D development network our technical development network and post early and often like like Emmanuel you said oh I wasn't ready the files not ready well at OSC when it's not ready it's ready to be posted up to the wiki <laughs> thank you very much okay any other comments I want to get a little bit of feedback here because uh, on agenda is uh, I'll go through the questions and work assignments um, we're trying to do fabrication drawings. We're not ready for fabrication drawings yet, so I'm going to cut that out from the agenda right there. But um, we're supposed to go through the teamwork assignments, questions, and suggestions. So actually, let's keep to that schedule because it does make sense. 
so work assignments and then we'll cover the outstanding questions and then we're going to talk a little bit about suggestions for how we can make this process more effective because I know Jose piped in a lot of nice comments on uh, getting a good agenda and getting the development network page going and clear communication channels and so forth clear division of labor because it's going to be a real trick well, right now it's a it's a real trick of how you actually divide the work with many people uh, to make it effective and, and the idea where you can modularly break down and people parallel on the task that's a great idea absolutely it works and the question is how do we make it more effective because now we only have under 10 people what happens when you have a hundred well probably you're gonna break up into teams but probably a team might have like say 24 people or so well we're gonna to have to keep track of everything really nicely and, and get some process managers involved to keep documenting things so that the indexing is very effective like like for example you have a page with the entire machine and on it you have all the different parts that you can you can click on which would serve as a graphical index to make things very easy to navigate to okay but let's go to the uh, teamwork assignments and for that I'm actually gonna dip back into last week and I'm gonna copy and paste the page from last week where we were talking about the division of labor so page 9 from last week I'm gonna just copy and paste that so what you do is I just copy right there and then I'm gonna go paste into our document right here after 7 I'm gonna pa I just put control V from the former document into this document let's see if that thing shows up uh, let me make sure I got that so control C on this okay yeah it's, it's showing up here on this page 8 the index so definitely we've got exploded part animations to be done and continued so um, let's assign some roles I think yeah, and here we have actually like a, the check system. So initial script, explosions done in FreeCAD. Okay, so I actually want you all to do this. There's a little system here, so help me out in terms of what is done. One check means that the script has been written. That means all the scripts here are done, but, but there's more done. So explosions done in FreeCAD, video done. So copy and paste by your name if something is done. But if it still needs to be finished, uh, don't put the check by it. Uh, so explosions done, video done, and look at the last step. Caden Live file, FreeCAD video, source uploaded to YouTube. Three items. Caden Live file where you're actually editing your short piece, your 30 second piece. The actual FreeCAD file with the explosion. And the actual video where you caught the video and uploaded it to YouTube. Um, it doesn't have to be with the voice because the final video will have the voice and everything but upload those three source files because if those three source files are uploaded um, then somebody else can actually help you on that it's not siloed like for example somebody disappears and doesn't finish a video well with those three source files someone can just go into into Caden Live um, edit make more edits or upgrade the soundtrack or upgrade the free cat file and actually finish it very important let's do that we've never done that but that this is like pretty exotic stuff where you upload uploading the the source code for the full collaborative video production that's interesting so let's do that but once once uh once you've done it put all those things up and i believe Roberto has done all of that. Let's see. Let's go to... I, I was very encouraged here where you've got... Let's see Roberto log. But I think I've seen all those files on his log. Did I? So... Uh, the Life file is missing. Okay. Okay. So let's see. I'm um, not sure about... That, that Life is... okay very good question let me explain that yeah no I understand that what you have to do um, in fact uh, so the the Caden live file is a tiny edit file but it relies on your soundtrack and the video so what you want to do 
is take that little file, don't upload the video, but upload the video to YouTube because the video is going to be very heavy. After that, upload the, the Caden Live file, the soundtrack and video should be uploaded on YouTube. Then all you have left is the tiny Caden Live file. Because the idea is if you uploaded the Caden Live file with the corresponding video and audio, that would be a lot of megs, a lot of memory. Uh, and YouTube is really good for a lot of like heavy memory stuff. You just upload the file there, you don't have to worry about memory space. Um, so that's the procedure. Upload the soundtrack and with the video with soundtrack to YouTube. And then all you need is the small Caden Live file, which you can either zip or, or upload directly as dot Caden, dot Caden, KD, whatever the, the ending is for Caden Live. You can either zip that. You probably want to, no, you do want to zip it because within the, the source file, you also have the intro screen. So so zip that little packet of your Caden Live file, intro screen, and any, any other little graphics or anything you put in there. Um, zip that up and upload it to your log. And that, at that point, you've got those three files, or I guess it's two. One is the Caden Live zipped up with all the supporting graphics, and then the single upload to YouTube. And of course, the, sorry, the third part is the actual FreeCAD file. So three items. With those three items, somebody can go to your log and you can completely pass that on to somebody else. And I cannot emphasize how important that is for collaborative production. If we master that, I mean, that is some really cool stuff because then we can scale the project to uh, including the video production, which is like what we're doing right now with Explode Part Animations is pretty elegant, I would say. It's allowing us to distribute the instructional production completely without bottlenecking it on the actual me taking all the video here. So you guys are helping a lot. That's That means a lot to me because I'm not going to have to spend two full-time weeks shooting videos and editing them. You guys are doing that. So this is perfect teamwork. But that's what it requires. The three files, Caden Live file, YouTube upload, and the FreeCAD file. Upload that all to your log. And that gets the force fourth star when all the source is uploaded. So is that accurate what it says here? It says Caden Live file, FreeCAD file, video source plus voice source to YouTube. So three items there. Uh, and that should be clear. That is very important. This is, I think we're going to make some history with that as far as developing collaborative protocols for open source development there. Okay. Um, so as I'm speaking here, all of you who are on the call, please put your checks on, on this, um, on this for whatever needs to be done. But, but as far as what I'm reading right now off the, of this index here, I'm seeing that whoever's working, I think Roberto, you've got, can you edit or you're not able to edit? Yes, I am. Then you should be putting more check marks to your, probably to your idler side, right? Because you've got the video done. I mean, I think you're pretty much you've done the video. You've got three marks. The last thing is just to right, just to upload the source. Excellent. So I mean, that's really good. And La okay, Lashlo, show me, show me. Uh, I want to see Lashlo if he's got all that uploaded to his. So it looks like Lashlo. Um, Wait, what are we doing? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We're at the... Oh, no. Did I mess it up? Ah, I'm sorry. Sorry, guys. Uh, you guys are uh, updating the old document. Um, I'm pasting the link for this week's document. Uh, that's the... Yeah, I'm seeing people put in the check marks on the work document from last week. I'm sorry for confusing you. Uh, what I'm showing on my screen, the one from this week and the slide number eight of the April 17 document is where you want to be. Um, and I saw Lashlo, for example, you put the four stars on your last 
week's document, but let me look at your log to see if that's indeed all done so we can comment on that. So this is a, if so, that would be a great example of how we can work together remotely. So let's see. Look at that. Completion percent, <laughs> look at this. So he even put in a little table here. In progress, wow. From, from what I can see here, this looks perfect. Uh, all the files are uploaded. So for example, if I go to the FreeCAD file, I clicked on that. No preview available download. Okay, the only comment I will make, don't put it on Google Drive. You put your upload on Google Drive. Just upload it to the wiki uh, as far as the FreeCAD file. Let's see the video. Where's the video? Video I'm expecting to be at YouTube. Okay, yeah. Um, don't worry about that. Put it onto YouTube uh, if you don't mind. Uh, do you see anything wrong with putting it on YouTube? Can you just put this raw source file on YouTube? Please type in the chat box or respond because because that's what I would do unless you see any other. And the Caden Live is also on on Google Drive. Put everything on the wiki and on YouTube, unless there's a compelling reason not to put things the the raw video on YouTube. Because the idea here is that. Uh, for me, for example, let me tell you how this works. People are watching my YouTube channel. They're like, what are you putting up all this stuff for? It doesn't make any sense. Um, and then I just say, sorry, it's source videos. So uh, you, the thing you can do is just say, you can say it's a source and then people know that it's not like your edited video. So it's okay. It's okay to put these things up on YouTube. That's what YouTube is for. People use it for all kinds of things. So I would suggest that. And let's see the final video. So the final video I'm expecting to be on YouTube and it's also on Google Drive. Um, yeah, no need to put it on Google Drive, just put it on the YouTube. And don't worry about having the raw video up on YouTube because one time you'll find that somebody actually makes a useful comment and they're not on our team. So that's what happens. Okay, the voice and the voice is also on, I'm seeing Drive as well, it appears. Yeah, so put. feel free to put, yeah, the voice file you can combine the voice file with video by taking CadenLive and putting them both in CadenLive and just exporting as one file onto YouTube. That would compress those two files into one. And when you download that in CadenLive, you can separate the voice from video. So that's not a problem to separate it. So that's what I would suggest. But yeah, so great commentary here for learning on how to do this uh, as, we, as we learn all of this together. So good, good, good. So otherwise, I would say for the work division, I think most people have, let's see, so if you can, what we should do is definitely up, update this current slide here. Um, so I think three here, Lashlow had the four, which is pretty good. It's 99% done, just upload the things to the right place. Um, yeah. So the idea is if you're if you're complete, there's part one and part two. So there's definitely more to go for everybody. Uh, oh yeah, but I think Lashlow, for example, I think on yours the timing was not like I would say maybe we gotta take away the third star from Lashlow here because the video, while done, it's not actually complete yet. I mean it kinda is. But you I think you need to do more work on the timing. So we need to modify the timing a bit and make that more accurate. So I'm going to give you uh, two stars for two, two checks for now. I think there's more work. Do you agree with that or is that okay? Yeah. Okay, great. We're all in agreement. That's pretty good. Um, and this one, I'm going to, this is the, I'm going to close down the last week's document there because it's confusing me. Um, that was the last week's document. So the this is the current week's document. Okay, so what I'm seeing here is that all of us have more work to do on Explode Part Animations. Uh, Emmanuel is not doing the frame, he's doing the cable chain. So that's an empty one. Uh, and it's got a check mark for the script, initial script already done. So I think the idea is for everyone to just continue 
Uh, we got Abe, Lashlo, Jean Baptiste, Roberto, Chaz, and then we've got Jose working on a D3D Mini. Um, so I'm gonna put that here. So other work. So Jose is doing the finishing up the D3D Mini. Sorry, the D3D the 12 inch. Um, but if you're watching this, if you want to help in on any of these other parts, like for example, part two, unless the part one, for example, here has got to be all completed. So definitely someone can take part two here, part two there. Someone wants to do the frame and so forth. So cable chain is going to be a good one. And then uh, the last one to add here would be um, the one that's pretty complicated is the belt tightening uh, which I will put I would say the final assembly belt tightening I'll put that as the first one but that's a pretty complex one um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put a, a, a check by it because it's not an initial script but it's the video in this video someone can convert it to a script so I don't have to do that the script is basically getting the thing started but someone can take a look at this video and of course cut out all the fumbling I did when I was showing you guys how to do the belt tightening but someone can actually pull that off this video as a great collaborative assignment okay um, so starting with writing the script uh, from the video so that should be like, uh, I'm going to actually maybe like shrink that down. <laughs> I'm going to compress it into a half half check right there. <clears throat> video is, the script is half half written. It's just recorded on this video. Okay, so anyone else have any questions on what to do? I think there's, uh, the, for perspective, the event is on the 29th. Um, two weeks left. We've got seven printer builds already signed up that's pretty good where were we last week i think we were at three so the trend is continuing we're gonna looks like we're gonna have 12 or more people building printers and of course there's uh like pairs coming in as well where there's assistance coming to with most of the people coming to the to the show so this is going to be a very lively exciting event now the instructions here are very important this is what we are going to play for our 12 or 24 people so love our future participants and help them out by producing good good videos and, and we're definitely on the way there so I would say definitely this week uh, keep finishing the the instructional videos and I think that's I mean I would just just from review I think that's working well I mean the what Roberta has shown already as an example is is great of something we can actually play as is right now um, like three marks is video is done that's playable for the workshop but unless the fourth mark is there we cannot upgrade it to future changes or iterations so that's how it works great okay now let's wrap up with the last two items so so unless you've got any questions which please put them into like including questions on the assignment itself so let's go through them because there's a bunch of them uh, and then let's wrap up with suggestions for how we can make this stuff better Okay, question suggestion. We've been avoiding, we have to avoid using STL files. Okay, that's true. So, so this is Emmanuel's comments on why we need to avoid STLs because they're not regular, they're hard to work with, they don't have flat faces, they're divided into a lot of different triangles. Good point. Um, yeah, so that's that whole part one is a good point. Um, Okay, so question. Let's do. Um, so that's let's let's. Uh, I'm kind of confused here. That's it was still different. So let's put um, bullet points by that. So each question with a bullet point or something like that. So will the timesheet accept daily submissions? You want to do it just once a week, otherwise it gets too confusing. But you can. That means, like I look at the spreadsheet and then sum up the con contributions for the week. So you actually can. There's no reason, but just but one time is, e I mean, 
whichever way, so, way works better for you. As long as the hours are recorded and you're not putting in things twice, please do so. Um, if you think daily would be better all around, great, go right ahead. No problem with that. That just means there's more, more rows, but they just get summed up just the same uh, in a spreadsheet. That's fine. Are we working exclusively on D3D Mini? Um, as I answered this, um, no, it's really all of them because the parts are the same for a lot, except the rod lengths and belt lengths, the, the axes are pretty much identical. Um, and the ones that aren't identical, they're delineated, like the Z's got slight difference and stuff like that, but yeah, that's all, it should come out in the wash in, the, in this, in slide eight, with this divided up. I mean, right now we're still working on all these things, so it's clear as far as the division of labor, if we've got more people adding to this, um, we can direct them to, I mean, here's, uh, where are the actual, here are the parts, the assemblies are here, X, Y, and Z assemblies. So there's a lot of work here. Um, the whole assemblies are here. And then the final assembly, like, like attaching all the axes to the frame and everything else. I mean, there's more work to be done. The scripts are not written for that. I think we've got plenty of work to do here. Okay, next question. Any suggestions with the belt and free CAD? Yeah, Emmanuel's got the file in the good pieces. Um, look at his log. I mean, suggestions for how to do it. Uh, we're we're going to have to end up doing something like... Um, well, first of all, for perspective, we're going to create a workbench within FreeCAD for 3D printer design. That means you drag and drop all the pieces within FreeCAD off existing icons off the top. Sound great? Yeah, it's absolutely exciting. So we'll add the, the 3D printer design workbench to FreeCAD because it's in Python and, and FreeCAD is fully extensible. It's a great project for somebody. It would take a little bit of time. But then in there we can have things like create the belt. So a belt maker or a cable chain maker or wire router, just to simplify those functions. We're going to automate that somehow by using scripts, by programming that into the actual interface. So that's something more advanced, don't have clear solutions right now. Right now we kind of got to work with what we've got. Um, no easy answer right now. Um, maybe a manual you can pipe in. That's a good point for discussing on the, on the discussion thread. I think I have uploaded a YouTube video instructional. Okay. Um, on your log? It's on your log? It should be. I will double check that okay. now. I will See his it. video. Okay. So he's done some work on that of how to how to put it together. He's actually making it out of little pieces, which is pretty effective. So I think if it's made out of a very lot of different pe little pieces, what you need to do to make a shorter or longer belt, like if you take a long belt, Maybe we should upload the long belt, and for the shorter belt, you just cut out the the inner pieces so you make a shorter belt, and then put those two together. Kind of basically cut out a bunch of pieces and, and move the ends together. Okay. Do you want a backup YouTube? Want to backup YouTube contents in Wiki? No, no backup in Wiki because YouTube is gonna take. You're talking about gig gigabyte scale. The Wiki. It's kind of like the kilo and megabyte scale of input. Uh, the wiki only accepts up to 50 megabytes. YouTube ac accepts many gigabytes, I think. At least I'm regularly uploading. Well, I know you can regularly upload like one gigabyte, no problem, on YouTube. I don't know what the limit is on YouTube. So no YouTube repeats on the wiki. We want to use save that all. Save it for, for YouTube. But what do you put on a wiki? Well, just the embed code. So without putting all that stuff, it's living on YouTube, but it's displayed in a wiki. So do the HTML embed code from YouTube into the wiki. So save to YouTube, embed in wiki. And now here's the idea. Do you need OSC's channel to do it? Don't worry about it. Put it on your own YouTube. Because then once you have the final video, I'll just download it and put it on an OSC site or on an OSC channel so that everyone knows which is the final version and it's all in one place. Okay. 
Another question, I've been recording much of my work log using Volca screen at 8 frames per second. The file is only 300 megabytes, so easy to upload to YouTube. Okay, good point. I'm using like 20, I think, the regular frames per second for a little bit of higher quality. And what I do there is as soon as I have the Volca screen file, like one of these meetings would be like 2 gigabytes, like right now. So what I do is I put it into FreeCAD and export as um, like MP3 or something else. Just export it from... Caden Live, which shrinks it by a factor of 10 or so, so from like two, two, 2 gigabytes it goes down to 200 or 300, so 300 meg. But that's what I do. Uh, don't reduce the, well, either way that works better for you, you get higher quality, but you have to have the extra step of, of compressing that within FreeCAD to a much small, smaller file. That's the questions and suggestions. Let's see what else we got on uh, questions from Chaz. Um, Let's see. This Chaz says M6 by 25 long socket inserted into which hole and with what orientation? So actually, we got rid of the M6 by 25, no 25 millimeter, only uh, the 18 millimeter and the 30 millimeter. Uh, the 30 okay. millimeter goes in to the nut catchers on the X axis, so you can connect the X axis to the Y. So the 30 millimeter bolt goes through the y-axis carriage pieces and screws into the nut catchers on the X. And if you take... I'm a bit confused about that. Okay. If you look at... Uh, for that, it's going to take me some time to, to load it. But what we have to do there is take... Um, I would say a manual. Does your file... Of the final D3D have a separate X and Y axis because you can see how the X and Y go attached to each other within the master CAD file so that's what you'd want to do look at the master CAD file and what I can tell you is this uh, let me just show it to you since I've got many of these axes axes here let me show you in real life how it goes together so I'm gonna okay, stop thanks. the screen share so you got two of them like this uh, that are on the these are the two Y's okay so now you take the the X axis so I'm gonna just make believe this is the X it goes like this there's nut catchers and an idler okay so the bolts that stick through here they go like that um, so once I if I get a chance to look at the master CAD file, I can better see how it all fits together and where I need to if, place the nuts. Yeah, it fits exactly that. The bolts that you see sticking out, they actually go into the nut catcher. That's in, There's a little nut. The x-axis has the nut catcher nuts. In other words, let me show you a screw. Uh, which is really nice. So the screws can screw in right here. This 30 millimeter screws right in there. Oh, let me zoom in to. So it screws on there because there's a nut catcher in there. And then if you have the axis in there, uh, yeah, I mean the axis piece. Let me see, do I have. Like, say that's the, you know, your axis piece. Oh, let me just show you. So say that was the carriage from the other other side. Yeah, it just screws in right through there. Um, okay. Just like that. So that's this blue one is say the X. Yeah. So you're attaching them like that. So that's this is the X and the the Y, you know Y on two sides. Yeah, it should be should be pretty straightforward. Yeah, if you look at the main file, you should be able to see that all. I mean, how they attach exactly, uh, the bolt pattern and all that. That's in there. So just by observing and making the parts transparent, you can see where the bolts. Well, maybe it doesn't. I'm not sure the final file has the, all the bolts, but that's a thing we want to generate uh, before the 29th. What we do want to do so everyone has an absolute complete model. The people in the workshop want to have their computer with them and they can hide and unhide parts in FreeCAD so they can see the entire assembly uh, happening. And by that time we'll actually have the animation, hopefully, 
of the entire machine so they can just pr press play as they're doing the assembly. So that will be like really excellent level of documentation. So I would say Emmanuel, like you're the farthest, maybe Emmanuel, Jose possibly, but Emmanuel, I mean, you should probably, right after you do the finish the mini parts, you should probably go back into the final 16 inch version and make the absolute complete model of that. So as, as soon as yeah. you have the mini worked out, just go right to that and put every single bolt and everything in there because we're gonna need that well, it would be nice just for people to take apart the complete machine within a full CAD model. Because right now the model is a little incomplete. It's got uh, some things missing. I mean, it's still good enough to look at how everything fits together, but you won't get down to every single part. So that's yeah. where we are. Um, okay. Uh, I, Go ahead. I have, I have not put um, the, the belt tensioner at any model. Yeah. I don't have it. Right. Do you have a no, I mean outside of what I talked about today, I mean the belt tensioner is your is just your little plug going into the hole, right? I'm I'm, I'm just saying that it, it's not included in any in any not mini yeah. not the sixteen tensioner. Yeah, yeah. So basically, yeah. for the assembly of a complete axis module, yeah, we might not get to that. I might just have to show people in real life how to do it. It is really tricky. I mean, if we get that instructional finished, that'll be really good, but. Not maybe necessarily expecting that the belt tensioning, um, unless we get some more people, because we're pretty busy right now. We've got only like two weeks left. I mean, right now it's just this week and next week, because the workshop is Saturday, not this week, but the week after. So, I mean, time is running out. Um, but it's pretty easy to show somebody like in real life. I can demonstrate that. Maybe maybe that's a thing that's probably best left for the video. And it's probably what I'll do. I'll, I'll make my... <laughs> my video and that'll be the, the actual how you tension the belt and put put it through but this belt tensioning mechanism we're very proud of that I think it's really nice it's very easy when you tighten it properly like you can pull on it and it strings like a guitar string um, so you can actually hear the sound so it's really nice and like two pegs and the belt nothing else no like screws no no other tensioner mechanism uh, very nice so that's about it so that's pretty much the wrap up of the meeting now the only thing is um maybe any comments on or suggestions on how we can make this meeting work better any comments or suggestions outside of um is there a, yep go ahead is there a link to on that final cad file that i can reference for the motor axis assembly uh you would go to the d3d integration uh, that's that's where it has the master CAD file okay that page uh, that's the one with this graphical index here and in the upper left is the overall let me share my screen if you go to that page <clears throat> upper left within the work document here so that's the work document overall assembly file has got this that link up there file? yep yeah and the other ones will have the axes. And then I guess if you go to look at... Uh, no, actually the 12-inch version has the axis in a different way. The, here is uh, the 16-inch version has, like just like you see here, the x-axis stands vertically uh, against the, the carriage on the y. Whereas in a 12 and 8-inch, the x-axis is actually lying flat on the y-axis. Yeah. Um, let's see. Any suggestions? We're over time. Maybe no time for suggestions unless anyone has any comments and suggestions. I mean, it's all about good division of labor and clear documentation. I think we're learning. I think we're doing well. I would like to uh, continue the learnings. Like the things we have to do still are the uh, fabrication drawings. There's a module within FreeCAD for that. So assembly drawings would be a good thing to learn next. Not sure we're going to have time for that before this event, but we'll try to continue learning something new every week um, as far as the skill sets are involved here. So the other, okay, actually the other suggestions part that maybe we'll leave it, the meeting with this, but for the suggestions, I would also like to hear like 
how are you doing or is there other stuff that you would like to work on? And you can't just say, oh, I want to work on this other thing. It first has to be on a roadmap. And second, you can't just like drop a project without someone, you or someone else picking up on it. So those would be the, the considerations. But given our roadmap, like we're getting exciting. It's getting, going to get exciting with a six foot tall 3D printer, the print cluster, filament extrusion. I mean, that's going to be really cool. We'll be ready to produce um, real things. I mean, we start recycling plastic. Like uh, my vision for my household here is you know, all the tr trash plastic I make, it goes into the grinder and into filament. So stuff like that, that's pretty good. And the automatic part harvesting and things like that. Um, so as I said in the last slide, please include your suggestions of which, whether you're happy doing what you're doing or where, whether you want to do something else, like in the question suggestions section. Um, we kind of went through these here, but if you want to put another one, like about your role satisfaction, like if you're okay doing what you're doing, if you want to switch or, or work with somebody else or something else, feel free to make suggestions at that level while remembering that we can't just drop stuff and we need more people to do different stuff. Yeah. Um, share more freak out how to tutorials. Yeah. Uh, we want to do that. That's a good suggestion. And, and we're trying to build up the documentation and development team so we can dedicate some people to doing tutorials like that. Um, that would be a really good thing. Like, for example, there's so much new stuff coming out on the FreeCAD architecture and other things which we're going to get into later once we do the seed eco home um but yeah yeah de definite huge need for that we need more people i mean right now we're kind of doing what we can we're we're lagging on training our people for a more effective um free cat work yeah anything else to be said if not i think we've got plenty to do and uh can do it meet next week again so just a quick question yep I yep go ahead clip. yep the belt clip the, the both sides are the same piece right that's they are the, same, the single printed part that's right. exactly right exactly and and um, right. that little peg has a hole through hole where the belt goes in through one hole and on the other side it doesn't go through the hole yeah right on the other side it just sits on top of the belt to clamp it down exactly and the 3D printed piece, you'll notice that it's got the ribs in it, so the belt actually sits in those ribs, and that belt is not coming out. So it's it's a really nice little mechanism. And the nice thing about it is you can pull the peg in and out relatively easily while it provides a very tight fit. Um, so the the putting in the peg is very easy. The hard part is to get the actual tension. You have to be pulling on the belt as you put in the peg from the other side. So the pulling of the on a on a belt that step kind of requires you can do it with two hands but if two people are doing it it's even easier right. one person can do it pretty well like i can get it tight enough that it, that it strums like a guitar hear that yeah there's a little reverberation but that's how tight the belt should be it should definitely reverberate like a guitar string <clears throat> but anyway, uh, good stuff. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, hearing no more questions, we'll, we can wrap it up. So to sum up, um, I wanted to... Oh, yeah, so some people put in their hours. So I'm going to add these ones. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we're going to add 13.5 to this one so 102 plus 13.5 115.5 so 11.5 so 11.5 I guess and 7 here look at that all right, definite clear and upward motion in a, in a graph. Uh, <laughs> so I think, so this is our timesheet as far as people have filled stuff out. 
and I think with that said we can be happy and go to the next next week so yeah the numbers are are growing here definitely um, we want to continue getting more people on the team so please invite people because uh, we've got many more tasks to do and a, and a roadmap is ambitious definitely for the whole year so I think uh, we'll quit it at that thanks for paying attention here thanks for contributing and uh, this video is recorded so we'll put it on YouTube as soon as I compress it down in size and upload it to YouTube and otherwise continue please on the 3d printer uh, network 3d printer development page on open on network.opensourceecology.org and as far as signing up for the workshop anyone who's watching it so actually what I was thinking in just the last thing all the videos that we're making they, they could also be really nice promotional videos where you can have a pop-up button on the YouTube video and I, I'll try to add that uh, I'll see if I can do that where you say click to build this and the to build this it takes you to the workshop that would be a cool thing so every video like that it could be our kind of like promotional video where it makes it interactive if you actually show up to the event to build stuff so that would be cool well with that said I guess that that will be all so please continue um, communicating on the network.opensourceecology.org sign up for the workshop at the event posting is actually at, at openbuildinginstitute.org slash workshops or you can go to the front page of the wiki opensourceecology.org slash wiki and you'll see the workshop announcement there so thanks a lot and we'll see you very soon that's it take care